16. NASDAQ is down by 18 points. U.S. futures taking a hit this morning. There are reports that President Trump has now approved tariffs on $50 billion worth of Chinese goods. An official announcement is expected today from the White House. The president's approval coming after a meeting yesterday with top economic officials, including Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin, Commerce Secretary Wilbur Ross, and Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer. Now, the affected imports would face 25 percent tariffs. Joining us now, Melissa Armo of StockSwoosh.com. Uh, Melissa, let's get your take first on the response. Well, first off, the market response. We're seeing quite a sell-off this morning. Definitely. I was surprised when I got up this morning how big we were down. I mean, we we're all aware that these tariffs were coming up this week, but I think we're down a lot this morning, and I would be shocked if we don't fall today because the market really didn't rally a whole a lot this week where I thought we would. After the summit, I thought we'd take off like a rocket, and we really did it. And we kind of just held. We were strong. We held, and now we're gapping down big this morning. You know, it's interesting because it's kind of been an on off situation with a potential trade war, whether we're talking about the Europeans or the Chinese or the NAFTA negotiations, mm -hmm. which are frankly falling apart between Canada and Mexico and the U.S. Of those three things, what's the most, the biggest concern that you have right I, now? I think the biggest concern is tariffs. The, the market overall for the last few months has not liked tariffs. The right. market reacts negatively every time there's something out on the tariffs, and we haven't seen enough of a rally over the area for the S&P at least to get back over the highs or the Dow. Mm -hmm. the, the NASDAQ has had a great run, though, I'll say that, and that's been tech. I mean, Amazon made new highs yesterday. Netflix made new highs yesterday, but overall the market does not like tariffs, and that's the biggest mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing that I see that would hinder us from going higher in the months in the, in the upcoming months. You know, I've got Mitch and Jack with me from Shinnecock Hills, and I want to go out to both of you on this issue of the sell-off that we're seeing, guys. Mitch, to you first, that trade war, investors having a pretty rough reaction today to what has frankly been talked about for weeks, that we would have a very uncomfortable uh, trade war going between ourselves and the Chinese. Now it seems pretty pretty clear it's going to happen. And, and Cheryl, I'm a little honestly surprised that the market's reacting. And I, I do agree that the market doesn't like tariffs, but I think it's been pretty well uh, communicated and telegraphed by the administration that tariffs are going to be a strategy that they're going to use to get Chinese and, and some other countries' attention. Uh, we'll see how the day plays out in the markets, but I wouldn't at all be surprised if, uh, as the news uh, evolves over the day that the market could even turn around today. And Jack, I mean, you, yeah, I agree with Mitch. Yeah, Jack, I was just going to say you, you are you're yeah. a, you're a, you're yeah. a double threat, frankly. I mean, you're on the financial side of the business as well as the <laughs> former football player in all of this. What do you say about the markets right now, Jack? I think it'll recover really fast. I don't think this will be, you know, a, a long-term situation. I mean, we have tariffs, but uh, at the end of the day, with, you know, the Trump administration are using these tariffs to also negotiate uh, on other foreign policy, uh, obviously with uh, North Korea and all sorts of things. So I think it's just the beginning. I think you'll see uh, a lot of back and forth over the next uh, probably a couple months, uh, but at the end of the day, you'll see some st stability come back into the marketplace. All right. Well, guys, I want to move on to another big story we're following, another market-moving story. It is official, AT&T completing its purchase at Time Warner. That was fast, just two days after a judge ruled that the deal could proceed over objections from U.S. antitrust regulators. This is a cash and stock deal worth about $81 billion as of Thursday's close. Melissa, do you think the government uh, is still going to come back and appeal this? The judge in his ruling specifically said... Yes, not to. Yeah. yeah, told the government, we really don't advise you trying to, to, to take this any further. Sure. And where would it go? Would it go to the Supreme Court then if they did that? They're probably, and it would be dragged on for even further, so that's probably why he asked for that. Also, there's so many other ones coming up, the Fox deal with Disney and now Comcast bidding for that. So this, this was a big ruling. And to be honest with you, I don't think it's good for consumers. I don't think it's good for consumers. We're going to have less and less companies. So it's a, it's a big deal if the Justice Department does not go and say we want to proceed with this further because I don't think it's good for consumers. They're becoming a monopoly. Sooner or later, there's going to be like two or three companies you can go and watch TV with, and they're controlling prices. And not only that, now they're controlling the content. So they're creating the content, controlling what you and I see, and they're going to fix the prices. I, it's interesting, Mitch, because I've heard the other side of the coin from other analysts that, that cover that space and say that they think that actually consumers might get a bigger break because of this because you're going to have you're, you're going to have Apple try to get into the game, or you're going to have Amazon try and get to the game. What do you think? In a time of uh, 
rapidly evolving technology, I think you can never look at who the players are today and think it's static and those are the only players. If you look at deals in other industries when there's been evolution of technology, the, the real competitors may not even be there today. So I think you have to really look at it over time. I also think we're at the beginning of merger mania and the, the floodgates are going to be opened. Uh, we were on with Judge Knapp the other day and he said that every law firm on uh, Sixth Avenue was hiring in their M&A practice. I think that's right. I think you're going to see a tremendous amount of deals. The first quarter was big for deals and I think that's going to be something we're going to see throughout the rest of the uh, calendar year, if not into 19 as well. And Jack, one of the hottest things right now when it comes to whether it's live streaming or distribution on a global perspective is sports, whether it's soccer or golf or football, and all of that could really change as well, the broadcasting component of professional sports. Definitely. I mean, times are really changing in sports right now. You know, it's a, a race for content, as we all know. So we'll see, uh, as Mitch said, a lot of different players will start coming into this market. But as it, as it relates to sports, I mean, you got to take into account also the new gambling laws. I mean, this is really going to change the game when it comes to, to content and viewership. I think you'll be able to, to really uh, hone in on a lot of more streaming dollars. Uh, just because you're going to have certain eyeballs that normally wouldn't be watching sports, you know, from their, their, their lap, laptop or from their, their iPhones. So I yeah. think, you know, you're just seeing the beginning of an of a industry swing right now. Yeah, I mean, as a, as, a, as a consumer, it's exciting, but we'll see how the business side of it plays out. Also, guys, we're looking at the U.S. economy. Seems to be revving up, just as other major economies are losing steam. We saw, the, of course, the European Central Bank holding interest rates steady through next summer. We got that decision this week. It's been a busy week. The Fed raised rates by a quarter of a percentage point yesterday. Melissa, I still want to start with you on this one. Simple explanation for the divergence that we're seeing. Well, obviously, the U.S. economy is just stronger. So they're, they're holding off there because they're trying to build themselves up. They're a little bit behind us right now. So that is the one positive thing right now, I'd say, as far as looking at the overall market. I still think the market holds the uptrend because the economy is so good, and we have the savings with the tax plan for the corporations this year. But the problem is right now in the next few months, I know everyone was saying earlier they think the market's going to hold up today. We were at a critical level this week, and we didn't get over that level. I really really think we're lower right now and you know even though the economy is great I don't want people to get all crazy and panicky because the economy is good it's a temporary sell yeah. if we have it temporary yeah, yeah. well look I mean, we we actually talked this week on Fox Business about the flattening yield curve don't think those words have ever come right. out of my mouth on the business network but that was something that kind of showed <laughs> that the Fed, I know Mitch is laughing about that right Mitch final word to you <laughs> well, who talks about that we yeah. did yeah, and, and the one thing I, I talk about right now is the fact that the dollar is gaining strength because our economy is growing faster than some European economies, which may not be great for markets because uh, so much of the earnings of the S&P 500 uh, are earned abroad. Uh, the market actually benefits when the dollar is weak. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens and how that plays out. All right, uh, guys, we're going to come back to you in Shinnecock Hills. We've got a lot of stories for you to comment on. I know you're both ready to roll on that. Melissa Armo, thank you so great much for being you. with me. It's great to have you on FBN AM as Thanks. well. Thanks. <laughs> Good morning, Victoria. Very excited. You're one of my favorites. All right, coming up, FBI.